Hey guys, we met Sam here today. Um, here to share with you guys the latest project. A lot of my friends and family have gotten on me for not posting videos lately. Uh, so I thought I'd share with you guys uh, my latest project, with the, which is the uh, 1984 Pontiac Fiero, um, converting it to 100% electric. Um, it's going to be a 120 volt system, I'll get to that later. Um, and some of the reasons I chose this car, uh, number one, it's a manual transmission. A lot of the Fieros are manual, I, mean, I know some of the later years are automatic. But um, for the most part, they're going to be uh, manual transmission, and that's one of the things you want for an electric car. Uh, you don't have to deal with you know things like cooling the transmission, um, things of like that, which take energy away from the car. So that's one reason I chose it. Uh, secondly, it's a smaller car. Um, you're gonna, generally the greater MPG you get, um, the greater distance or uh, efficiency you can get with an electric car. So um, that was another thing I was looking for. I wanted it to be able to you know travel a fair amount of distance. Um, and also, thirdly, uh, it doesn't have any rust. It's from South Dakota. Um, for, for those of you guys that don't know, South Dakota doesn't use salt on their roads, um, which makes South Dakota, you know, obviously not too much rust uh, with this car and other cars. Um, and if you were to look on it, you, you wouldn't find much rust, um, which, is, which is a good thing. Um, also, I guess, um, I was also looking for a car that wasn't damaged. Uh, with these Spiros, they have the plastic fenders that are fast plastic bodies. Um, and if, if a lot of the times if they're a crack, they're really hard to repair. And if you can repair them, it's hard to get them perfect without any blemishes. So um, that was another thing I was looking for. Um, down, downfall, it does, it does have a lot of uh, uh, sun damage. It, it doesn't have both the hoods on, but um, you can see it's got some chips here too. Um, um, obviously, it has some sun damage. It's been sitting in the sun for a, uh, for a while. Um, but I plan on actually uh, painting it down the road, so I'm not really too worried about it. Um, I plan on painting it, like I said, down the road when it gets running and stuff. Um, probably have a video when it's completely done for you guys. Um, anyway, now I guess I'll, I'll start with you guys down in the back here. To come uh, and um, first, first off, I just want to say I was planning on throwing out this trunk liner. It was completely just full of stained grease and everything. And I was planning on getting rid of it, throwing it away, and then um. But I'd actually write or recommended they use this Tough Stuff multi-purpose foam cleaner. Um, you can get this, I think, anywhere, pretty much any hardware store, and it it really works really well, guys. If you're going to clean any carpet, you have any stains, um, I would recommend um, using that. Um, I what, what you do is you spray it on um, generously, and then you get a you get a I got a brush, and I just brushed and scrubbed it kind of, and then I um, well actually you let it sit for 30 seconds, then you scrub it. Um, and then I actually end up getting a wet vac. They say you can just wipe it, um, wipe it off. And I actually ended up vacuuming it off with a wet vac, and it it almost came out perfect. Not only is it like brand new, but it it smells like clean, and um, so it, it really works well. Anyway, I just had to throw that out there. Um, so anyway, I have a 120 volt system here. Um, I actually uh, ordered online from Wilderness EV. Um, it's it's their highway kit, and I thought it was uh, the pricing was. Uh, was a fair it was a fair amount, um, especially looking at uh, other uh, websites and what they offer. And I thought it was you know just fair, so I, I ended up getting it from there. Um, it should actually be getting here with, within this the week here. Um, it's been a while since they ordered, um, but what comes in that kit is you're gonna get everything that needs to get your car running. Um, you need a charger. You're gonna get your your motor. Um, you won't get your batteries. You can order batteries on there separately. I think. Um, but anyway, it'll come with a, I'm gonna get a 120 volt motor, that's what I ordered. Um, I think it's a 10 inch motor, so it's gonna take up a good majority of this area here. Um, and what, what do you get with that is you're gonna get the motor and you're gonna, I'm, I got a generic adapter plate. And what that is, it, it, it basically means you, it mounts to your electric motor, and then you're gonna have to mount your electric motor on here and drill the holes and uh, bolt that onto your um, transmission hub. Um, and then, um, that also comes with a coupling, and that coupling um, attaches to here. Um, and then, um, I think you have to take out these rivets, but uh, anyway, that'll attach to here. Um, they also recommend that make sure you have these springs in here because uh, the electric motor has instantaneous torque, and um, um, after a while, if you don't have these springs, um, it'll, it'll end up um, wearing out your uh, grooves in here on your transmission. And um, so, yeah, you don't want that. So make sure it has that. Anyway, this will go on the uh, transmission with the coupling, and the coupling will go onto the motor. And this will slide back on here. Your motor will go on here and onto the plate, which is onto here, and it'll be on there solidly. Um, 
I'm probably going to end up making a bracket on the back side of the motor to help hold it in place. Um, again, I'll get when I, I have a later video, I'll get to that. Um, anyway, also some other stuff that I have going on back here. I plan on putting four batteries back here, six up front. Um, the only thing, like I said, I have to be worried about is I hope I don't have too much weight in the front. You know, I don't want it to be you know hard to steer. It doesn't have power steering, which is also another plus to the Fieros, um, less in energy. energy. Um, but I have a 12 volt system here. Um, and if you guys look, if you guys are doing a Fiero, the Fiero has, oh, I don't think this is, I think this is actually for the computer. I think it's just, this one. but um, it has one main wire right here, this red one coming out the back. You'll, you'll notice it's thick coming off the wire harness here. And um, that's what, you know, is my whole 12 volt system. My lights, you know, speakers, um, fan, all that will be ran from that. Um, and I'm gonna have a 12 volt battery here, a separate system for all that. Um, so um, that's, that's pretty much, I think, all I have going on back here, except I forgot this, the speed of the speedometer um, didn't work after I hooked all this up. Um, and I just I could not get it to work. And I looked online, and I think it has partially to do with the uh, speed control um, on these Fieros. They, uh, they ran the speed control back through the computer here. Um, and, and that messed with the uh, speedometer, because this thing will send a pulse out, um, and then the computer will be able to transmit that into a miles per hour um, so um, I'm gonna end up I'll get to that a little later on how I'm fixing that um, anyway I think that's about it for the back I, uh, I'm get, I got brand new brake pads um, and rotors all the way around um, I painted everything up really nice uh, you guys can see it right there everything's painted up uh, it's gonna be gloss black I have uh, American racing rims to go on here they're chrome so I think it'll accent that really good um, also, I ended up getting a brand new um, e-brake. My other one was uh, it was seized up, um, so I ended up getting a new one. Um, and I was having a, heck of a t having a heck of a time trying to find out how to get it put together. But it's actually pretty simple once, you, once I, I actually figure it out. It's pretty simple. Um, this comes from your lever, and uh, it comes up, and you'll you'll see where the old one goes up through the the wheel well there. Um, and then there's two separate sides. There's the uh, driver side, which goes right here, and the passenger side, which is the same thing right here, um, and then there's obviously the adjusting um, adjuster thing here, and then the uh, coupler there to adjust or connect the two, um, and um, that went together really well. Um, and also one of the things I recommend for you guys, if you guys replace your e-brake, is when I replaced it, there's a rubber bushing that came off um, here on the old one that was pretty much disintegrated, but it was there, and. Um, the new e-brake um, assembly did not come with that, so I actually had to put bushings there, or rubber bushings that I had um, right here. I forgot exactly what what size they were, but um, I put them on each one here, here, and on the uh, where it connects to the uh, um, caliper there on the both sides, which I would recommend doing if you guys do that. It really tightens everything up, and you get a really solid uh, cable there. Um, moving around to the interior, obviously I have everything. Um, Everything out of the car here, uh, the dash is out, uh, all the side panels. I actually end up hosing and scrubbing all those down, um, cleaning them up a bit. Um, the in inside here, um, I actually end up using, didn't get to this side, but I used carpet cleaner on that side, and you guys can see that uh, the carpet cleaner I used in the trunk. The rust spots for these, uh, the, where the seat was sitting, where it kind of rusted there, they're gone over there. And, I, and I actually, I was running low on the, the cleaner itself, and I didn't really. Um, Scrub it that hard. I feel like I could have done it better, even. Um, like I said, that stuff works in miracles. Um, and um, so I'm, I plan on putting. I took the computer out, as you can see, because I didn't need it with everything. It, everything else worked. The blinkers, you know, fan, everything else, horn, everything worked um, without it. So I, I took it out because I plan on putting a 10-inch sub right there. I'm gonna have to uh, get a custom. I'm gonna have to get a custom box to go in here. Um, keep this the wiring harness here. Um, Took the seats out, they're out back actually. Um, and one of the things also guys, um, is the sunroof on these cars uh, are prominent to leaks. Actually the 84 through 86 models of Fieros, um, they actually have a fix it guide uh, where you, you know, um, they say to fix the, the leaks that you should be drilling. I don't quote me, I just think it's quarter inch holes here and here on each side. And um, you, get, you drill through the fiberglass and it's supposed to, I think it's supposed to let the water out that's supposed to get behind your gasket, which shouldn't be behind there to begin with. Um, really, really a poor design, in my opinion, uh, by Fiero. Um, 
but like I said, I guess it is what it is. So if you guys have an 84, 386 Fiero, you're probably gonna end up doing this. Um, you're probably gonna have to end up changing your new rails too. I actually had to get new rails, gasket, clips, and uh, on the sunroof there, I actually had to get new, um, uh, whatever those are, I forgot, they little bolts that go through the um, sunroof itself. Anyway, so that's that. Make sure you guys um, get new ones of those if you need it. Um, I'm getting a new headliner on top of that. Um, obviously, with the leaky roof, uh, the headliner is falling down and actually kind of rotting. So I, uh, I got a new one of that, those coming. And um, the whole dash is off. Like I said, I'll probably end up putting a touchscreen radio in here um, down the line. Um, my instrument cluster is gone. I'll get to that here um, in a little bit. Let's move to the front of the car. See what we have going on here. Um, I have my uh, front, obviously a lot, majority of my batteries is going here, six of the 10. Um, a little over half are going to be going here. Um, I plan on a lot of guys online I saw were, were removing this whole thing, cutting it to make room for a battery rack. And I, I kind of want to maybe keep it if I can, because uh, for those of you that know, fear of the sunroof actually comes off and it sets in on these little tabs here and up to here. Um, so I'm trying to try keeping it and hopefully maybe cut just, just below this a little bit and I can still get my batteries in here. Um, we'll see on um, like later, later video detailing a little more detail exactly what's going on, maybe what it built. Um, I'll let you guys know, keep you updated on that. Um, I, and I guess that's about all I'm really uh, ha got happening so far here in the front. Have happening. Um, I'm gonna bring you guys over here to the uh, pedometer. Um, you guys can actually see that this came off the dash, obviously, and um, that slides in there like this, the miles per hour gauge, and I plan on putting this new one that I got online. Uh, I think I got it on Amazon. Um, it's type in GPS mile per hour gauge, and I think this one will pop up. It's one of the first ones. It's like 80 bucks. It, it's kind of expensive, but I kind of want to know how fast you're going, obviously. So, um, which is the nice thing about this one for you guys that are doing this conversion is um, I want to try you know using as much space as possible without adding any instrument clusters or anything like that. So I'm gonna try modifying this to fit into here. Now the kit I'm getting from Wilderness EV will come with an amperage gauge among some other gauges that I hope I can retrofit into here without having to make any extra boxes or anything. But the nice thing about this gauge is why I'm telling you guys this is um, it actually fits in here really, really well. Um, this actually, oh shoot, this actually almost fits perfectly in here. And you guys can see that. It fits almost perfect in there. Um, I might need to make a bracket or something. Um, like I said, a bracket to hold this in here, but uh, that'll fit in there hopefully fairly nice. And then I don't have to make an extra instrument cluster or anything like that, which is gonna be a plus. Um, honestly, I think that's about it. Um, I'll keep you guys updated with new videos. Um, I'll have another one coming out for sure. Maybe when it's done, maybe in between. Um, we'll we'll kind of gauge it and see. But uh, thank you guys. Uh, please like and subscribe my videos. Uh, um, invent Sam.